Greetings, everybody. This is going to be the commentary on Isaiah 66. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This might be one of the last vi videos that I do. Um, contemplating doing one on the purpose of the Great Tribulation in Scripture. So, I don't know. All right, let's see. In verse 1 and 2, well, in verse 1 of uh, Isaiah 66, now I've already read Isaiah 66, so this is just going to be the uh, commentary. You know, the Lord says, The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. You know, where is the house that ye built unto me? Well, King David built, well, assembled the materials for Solomon his son to build a temple for the Lord. However, in Revelation, I think it's 20, 21, 22, we read about the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. which is recorded in Revelation 3 and verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Revelation 21, 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, now, verse 2, Isaiah 66, For all those things have my, mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. What is a contrite spirit? Let's take a look at Webster. You know, the more I look into Webster's 1828 dictionary, and it should be in everybody's library, uh, the more I appreciate this man. I mean, he knew Hebrew and he knew Greek, the original languages of the Bible. He was a language scholar. Contrite. To break or bruise, to rub or wear. Literally broken. Broken hearted for sin. Deeply afflicted with grief and sorrow for having offended God. Humble, penitent. Um, wow. I, I hope you're getting the idea here. Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth, saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalms 51, 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Isaiah 57, 15, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus speaking, uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 10, Jesus speaking. Two men went into the temple to pray. The one, a Pharisee, uh, which was a denomination of the Jews, and the other, a Republican. Oh, I'm sorry, a publican. What was a publican? Uh, in a modern day usage, that would be an IRS tax collector. So the one's a Jew and the other's a tax collector. Verse 11, verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, 
I thank thee that I am not as other men are. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not so much lift uh and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So the publican is doing better than the you-know-whos. All right, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions. Wow. What's a delusion? Believing something is true when it is not. I mean, that's different than telling somebody a lie. I mean, it's you're believing something because even though it's not true, you're believing, you know, you believe it's true, but it's not. God says, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. In Proverbs 1, verse 24 through 33, uh, some pretty, pretty choice words here. Because I have called, and ye refused, I, the Lord, well, it's the Lord, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye had set at naught, or nothing, but ye had said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, which is correction. I also will laugh. I also will laugh. Do you know the Lord laughs? Oh, yeah. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they will not find me. For that they hated knowledge. What kind of knowledge? The knowledge of the Lord. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But, whosoever, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. What about delusions? How about Second Thessalonians chapter 2? Starting in verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. What's iniquity? Sin. Gross sin. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Some people will say that this is the Holy Spirit, but I don't believe that. When the Holy Spirit's uh, gone, there is no, uh, how do I put it? It is God that puts it in your heart to repent. And if the Holy Spirit's gone, so is that. Personally, I think, I think the restrainer is probably Michael the archangel. I mean, after all, he fought the uh, devil and cast him out of heaven. I'm sure the Lord... <laughs> well, let's just say the Lord was backing him up yeah but uh yeah verse 8 
And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, miracles, people, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11, And for this cause God, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Yeah, God, uh, Satan will also have them believe lies. But you know what? When you don't want God, when you don't want his truth, and you want your sin more than you want Lord, the Lord, verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There you go. Pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for, uh, for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. Ah, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. All right, Isaiah 66, verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, and let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Oh, yeah. Think about that. All right, this is going to be... Um, the Isaiah 66 Commentary, Part A. I've got to keep these under 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to close this out now and then make a Part B. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.